Okay, so you want to create an online attendance tracker in Google Sheets. Go to File, New, from Template Gallery. Scroll down until you see Education. And there is the attendance tracker template. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is play around with how these dates work across the top here. Now, basically, you want to be able to type a starting date here, and then all of these dates adjust. At the moment, that's not the case. If I change this date to the 13th of February, 2023, you can see these dates don't automatically adjust. If I copy this date across to fill the dates, I end up with Saturday and Sundays, which you may want, but in my scenario, I only want the dates to be weekdays. So what we can do, if I just delete dates that are currently there, is use the workday function. So our start date is the cell to the left, comma, we want to move on one working day from the date to the left, and then I close the bracket. So if I then fill that across, you can see that I only get Monday through to Friday dates. Now, the other thing you'd want to think about is your holidays, especially if you're using this in the context of a school. You'd want to make sure that bank holidays are accounted for and also half term and summer holidays etc so what you should do is create an additional sheet and call this holidays and you want to create a list of all the holidays for the date periods that you're working within so here i've got a list of all the bank holidays and also all the school holidays it's a good idea to create a named range for your holidays so if you go to the data menu and then to named ranges, you can add a range. We'll call it holidays. And it's going to refer to all the sales with these dates in. So if I click on this little select date range button, then use the shortcut key, control shift down arrow key, that will select down to the last consecutive cell that contains a date. So click on OK and then done, and now I have a named range. So if I go back to this workday function that I've got in here for my dates, I can use this last non-mandatory argument holidays to specify my holidays. And you can see your named range appears here in the IntelliSense list. So if I then copy this across, not going to make any difference in this current date range but for example if i changed the start date to the 27th of march you can see now that it skips two weeks worth of dates where we have the easter holidays now this works if your classes are monday through to friday so i'll just name this sheet monday through to friday class so I'm going to duplicate this sheet. So I'll right click on the sheet tab and go to duplicate. And this class is going to be a Tuesday and Wednesday class. So I need to write a formula that will only list Tuesdays and Wednesdays in the dates across the top here. So I'll change the first date to a Tuesday. Tuesday the 14th of February. So the formula in this cell is going to be slightly different. We're not going to use the workday function. We're going to use something similar called workday.international. And this is useful if you want to specify non-working days that aren't just standard Saturday and Sundays. So my start date is the date to the left, comma, the number of days that I want to move on from that date is one day, comma, 
And then in the weekend argument, you can specify which days are non-working and which days are working. A zero represents a working day and a one represents a non-working day. Now, you need to enclose these zeros and ones within quotation marks. So Monday would be the first day. So I'd put a one in for that, so it's non-working. Then Tuesday and Wednesday are working days, and then the rest of the days of the week are non-working. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Close the quotation marks, comma. Then I can also specify my holidays by referring to that holidays named range. And then I close the brackets. So now if I copy that across, you see I only get Tuesdays and Wednesdays as dates across the top of my attendance sheet. So if you need to add more dates to your attendance sheet, then you can just add more columns. I'll just close this little task pane down. So say I wanted to add four more dates to the attendance sheet. All I'd need to do is select four columns, right click, and then insert four columns to the right. Then I just need to copy the formula across and this one, and it will extend the attendance sheet for me. Now, obviously over here, you can put in the class name and you can put your name, the teacher name. Down here, you'd put the student names. And we've got a little key on this attendance key sheet that tells us what letters we can type in to the attendance sheet to represent different types of attendance or absence. So P for present, L for late, E for excused absence, and U for unexcused absence. Now, if I look over here, these column headings, these cells are linked to the cells in that attendance key sheet. So for example, if I changed this to EA for excused absence and this to UA for unexcused absence, then that would automatically update these cells here. Now I think that what we had there in the first place was sufficient. We only really want to have to type one letter in for each of these types of attendance or absence. So the idea here is that you can type in one of those letters and it will automatically tally up, say how many times a particular student was late or absent. You can see all these calculations going on here. Now, if you also wanted to add up the number of days the student was present or attended, you could add another column. So if I right click on the Z here and insert a column to the right, I could then link the cells here to the attendance key sheet. So I would go equals attendance key sheet. And here's the description of this type of attendance. And then also I can link this cell to the attendance key sheet where we have the letter representing the type of attendance. Now, if I want to count the number of presents or P's for Bob, I could use count if. Now the range is this range here. So the range of cells that I'm using to record Bob's attendance, comma, and the criteria is whatever I'm holding in this cell here. In other words, P, and I need to lock that. So I'm using the F4 key on my keyboard to do that. Close the bracket, press enter. And then I can just copy this formula down so if I add some P's here, you'll see it starts to tally the P's. And it would work down here as well for Brenda, because I've copied the formula down. So really you could have as many attendance key items as you like in this list. You just need to make sure that you create a new column for that type of attendance or absence, and then link to the relevant cells in the attendance key sheet. So the other thing I'd do is probably apply some conditional formatting so that these different letters appear in different colors. So to do that, I'd select all the cells that I want to apply the conditional formatting to. 
then I'd go to the format menu and then conditional formatting. So you can see it's already picked up the range of cells that I'm going to apply the conditional formatting to. For my first rule, I'm going to say, is the text exactly P? And if it is, I want a green background to the cell. So I go to this fill color button, choose a green background, and then click on done. So you can see all the P's now have a green background. I could do the same for the other letters. So for example, L for late, I can add another rule. Same range of cells. Text is exactly L. And then I could use a different color for that. Let's say orange, then click on done. And so on and so forth. You can create a color for each of the types of attendance or absence. Okay, so Google Sheets provides us with a great attendance sheet, but hopefully the little tweaks that I've shown you will make it even more useful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.